Hello there, Taurus. Welcome. So, I feel like the energy for this month is a continuation of last month's reading. And if you found that last month's reading resonates with you, you might want to, you know, listen to this video in its and or watch this video in its entirety. And then for others of you, I hope this uh, month finds you well, and then I hope that you know this reading is helpful either way, and that it resonates with you. Uh, when I was shuffling out this uh, spread, I didn't see an image, but when I started the recording, this is the second attempt at recording for you guys. I saw a screw. Okay, it's a pretty big screw. It's like the size of my finger. It's long, and then there's a lug nut. And it's being screwed into the wood, okay, like a wood panel. When I think of a Torian person, I always think of somebody who either likes to dither in their garden, they like to plant things, they like to, you know, tinker around in their garden, and then um, they're also very, very like. Um, focus on repairing things, fixing things. If there's a problem, the the Torian person will roll up their sleeves, get their hands dirty, and you know just just fix things. And so that imagery of the screw and the lug nut, and it's it's very handyman, uh, you know, repair oriented uh, focus. I feel like it's just the epitome of what I think of when I think of a, a Torian person. You guys are the fixer of the zodiac. Okay, you guys have like the most amount of patience. You and Capricorns, I feel the most amount of patience of anybody that I know. And so, last month's reading was about things broken, right? Things breaking down, uh, water leaking in, electrical like faulty electrical circuits, and and you know just um, electronics malfunctioning. This is the month where you have already preemptively taken care of all of those things, and so this month is going to be very smooth sailing. I feel for many of you who have taken the month of October to fix things that have broken down. Okay, and when we say fix things, it could be literally fixing things, or you have already taken care of those things that needed to be fixed. Uh, or figuratively fixing a situation, fixing problems, and trying to iron out, especially communication issues between you and another person, so that things don't exacerbate. Okay, because I mentioned greatly that those things needed to be fixed. You don't want to go into a Mercury retrograde cycle in the month of November 2019, calling repairmen or trying to fix, you know,、um, communication and and just problems in interpersonal communication. So I feel like many of you have preemptively, you know, have、uh, stayed ahead of the the game by fixing these issues. So last month's reading was about a deafening silence. It was like a a very uncomfortable silence between you and another person. And I feel like for some of you, there's a continuation of that. Okay, and、um, so the the only thing that I saw was the lug nut. And the 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 screw being driven or being like、um, screwed into a wood panel to keep it in place, okay? And so that denotes to me a situation where something is being strengthened, something is being forti fortified, something is、um, it's like put in place where it belongs, okay? So that's the first thing、um, I'm hearing, like put in place. So like put somebody in their place, or like.、Um, Understanding that some where something needs to go, and then I heard a song. So I don't know for many of you if you're familiar with this, but the song is "The Hook Brings You Back" by the Blues Traveler. And、um, when that song came on, this card came out: the Fool. Okay, this is about loyalty. Look at the the dog; he's fetching a stick, bringing it back to his owner. Okay, there's a sense of like blind faith, blind loyalty here, and it's a puppy. It's something that's very sweet and naive and just cute, cuddly and cute. Okay. Um. So when I saw this card, that song, the the song came out. This card flew out, and then I was getting the message of like,、um, I'm hearing bait. I'm hearing hook. I'm hearing fetch. Okay, so I don't know if somebody is. I don't feel like somebody is doing this to you, and I don't feel like it's those are malicious words. But I feel like there's an interaction between you and another person that's very cat and mouse. 
it's very very cat and mouse and I feel like you know one person has to um, ask one person has to like communicate in a way that might be cryptic in order to get the other person to ask more questions in order to get the conversation flowing again so I feel like it's like a bait it's like a hook it's like um, a situation where it's like skirting around the issue one person says this and the other person is like reading between the lines and that you know things like that blur communication and um, so those are the, the kind of like the imageries that I saw okay um, I want to talk about this reading because I feel like there's a definite beginning and there's an end. So it's it's very rare that, you know, the cards are very succinct where it's telling the story in its entirety. So let me just start from the beginning. I have here the Four of Swords, Stoppage in Communication. Um, the way this card is depicted, it's orange, okay? And I think of like orange is uh, something where it's not really red, it's not really green. It's like slow down, right? Like that, that yellow light or that, that the orange sign where or the orange color. It's like in between the, the spectrum, hot and cold. Um, I feel like there was something that had a lot of potential to get off the ground. And for some reason, it was cut short from your actions or the other person's actions. But no one is relinquishing. I mentioned to you guys that you guys are very, 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 very stubborn, okay? Once you have your mind made up about something, a course of action, a decision, um, I just feel like you don't really give, okay? So there's a situation where the strings are like, you know, um, taut, okay? The, the strings are just extended. And if, if it's like a tug of war, nobody's really winning. And so what needs to happen in a situation where there's a stalemate in the tug of war game is, you know, you, you splice it right down the middle and both sides fall down. Because that's what I feel. It's like no one is willing to relinquish control. No one's willing to compromise. No one is willing to uh, let the other person win. And so if you slice the cord down the middle, both sides, you know, have been pulling with all their might they're going to collapse within themselves. So there's a situation here. It hasn't been spliced yet, but it's getting very, very close. It's like a tenuous situation where we have to learn to compromise, where we have to learn to give, where we have to learn to like give the other person some leeway, give the situation some leeway. But more than anything, it's a reflection of yourself to giving yourself some slack, okay? Um, not running yourself to ragged to the ground in order to fix situations, giving yourself some slack, maybe even letting the situation rest so that you can revisit it another time to resolve the situation. Does that make sense? So I feel like there's a, um, a stalemate here and the stalemate has created some type of animosity between you and another person where you're feeling the pains of separation, three of swords, okay? So we're going from a Four of Swords, Three of Swords. This is a, I feel like it's very momentary. Uh, it, I feel like it's very momentary. Is that even a word? I'm not, I'm, I'm thinking momentary, but I'm, I'm like, my mind is like monetary. Um, it could be mo like financially related where you're not giving slack to the other person. Uh, for some of you, if this is like a divorce proceeding, a separation or something like that, you're trying to iron out your financial assets and you're just like, I don't want the other person to get anything. Or the other person could be doing this to you, you know, not wanting to, you to get the house, not wanting you, you to get the, the kids, not wanting you to, um, you know, just... I'm, I'm feeling that it feels a little uncomfortable okay financial assets no one is uh, is really compromising but going back to my original train of thoughts I feel like this is very temporary okay so the word is not monetary but or momentary but very temporary um, because we're going we're descending okay four of swords to the three of swords and then it's gonna be the two of swords stalemate revisiting a situation molding things over and then the ace of swords where things will start to um, the two of you will start to communicate again so what I'm seeing here with the three of swords is there's a tremendous sense about missing another person 
the other person really misses your presence, your communication, you likewise, no matter how stubborn you can be, you really miss the other person, what they bring into the picture, their insights, their perspective. You really miss the perspective that the other person brings into the picture. You might have a problem and then they would say something that makes your problem seem very, very minuscule. Okay, not that they try to belittle you or downplay your problems. It's just they have a really high vantage point. Okay, so for example, for example, if you're complaining, uh, and and like I said, they're not they're they're not downplaying your problems. They're not brushing them off. They're they're not belittling whatever you have to say. I don't see that. I just feel like you're dealing with someone. Who sees the bigger picture? Okay, so for example, if you're just like, uh, oh my gosh, I came to work, um, you know, ten minutes late today. I slipped through the door, and uh, I'm worried that my boss is gonna find out. You know, they might have a habit of saying like, um, well, your boss trusts you, so you know, even if you come in ten minutes late, they're not going to question you or they're not gonna think the worst of it. It's like they know how to exactly what to say to. Make the problems seem very minuscule to wave the problems away, and to kind of like calm your nerves and calm your worries. They have a very wise, understanding way about them, and so I feel like you really miss the communication. You really miss the perspective change that they bring into your life. And then I also feel like there was a situation here. Where there was definitely a big stalemate. Okay, somebody feels a little bit attacked. Somebody feels like we're talking. It, it's like things taken out of context. Um, things just escalating right before your eyes, and you don't even know how it got that big. And so I, I feel like you know, I'm seeing almost like a, a balloon where it just balloons out of control, and it needs to be popped. Okay, so the question needs to be popped, or like the 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 circumstance, the the distance needs to be bridged between the two of you, or there's something here where the communication will start up again. I feel like we have here the Seven of Cups um, in the traditional right away deck. This is like you know online type of communication. There might have been a stoppage in communication when it comes to you know the the things that you do online. Okay. Uh, text messages, even. Um, I'm hearing Skype, and I'm also hearing like um, emails and and things like that. Okay, and so you might be wondering what the other person is doing. You might be, you know, trying to look at their social media, at their online forums of communication, to see what this person is up to, to see who they're with, to see, you know. What do they have going on in their life? What are they up to? What are they doing? And and things like that. So I do see a little bit of a remote spying, because I feel like there are pains, and pangs of separation, and you know wanting to have that communication, wanting to know what's going on, wanting to know what the other person is up to, and so what's happening here is I feel like this situation is going to smooth itself out. Because if you have had trouble seeing eye to eye with this Three of Swords, there's going to be a coming back together, Three of Pentacles, exchange of ideas, talking about things. So I feel like things are being replaced. Okay, so Three of Swords not seeing eye to eye. This is a card that's all about like, hey, let's agree to disagree. We know we're never going to see things from the same perspective. But we can build something of value based on our differences in perspective, and so I feel like there's um communication here, and this is where I feel like there's a bait or there's like a hook or there's somebody trying to um, pull the other person back in. So all is not lost, okay, Taurus. With this card, I'm sensing like um you know it's it's almost like you're. Either somebody, you know, like a mutual friend or like a coworker, or somebody is coming into the picture to bring the two of you back together. And out of their sense of loyalty and dedication、um, to to that person, I feel like somebody, you know, is showing their sense of loyalty and they're coming back in. Okay, so 
this is why I mentioned the reading is a little bit difficult because I feel like it's very cat and mouse. It's very like um, we haven't been communicating for a while and I really want us to be okay again. I don't know how to um, make small talk. I don't know how to broach the topic. I don't know how to get the other person to come back. And so it's like let your friends help you that energy where somebody else that's like a third party not in a bad way is coming in and they're coming up with a brilliant idea for a get together for a conversation starter for an icebreaker in order to get the two of you communicating again okay so if you are at a loss of words and you don't know what to say or how to communicate with that person that you've been estranged from my advice is to ask them something very practical. Ask them something like, hey, I know that you did this before and I have some um, problems with it. Can I call you so that uh, I can run through it with you? Or can you give me some advice? Or can you know, I pick your brains? Can I ask you some questions about this topic that you're an expert in? I feel like that's going to get the other person to come back. That's going to open up that channel of communication between you and another person. And I feel like Taurus you're i feel like you're the one doing this to the other person where you want to communicate with them you don't know how and so you're going to you know do some type of a bait hook in order to get them to communicate with you and then from there you know you're going to try to see where it leads so i feel like you have this ingenious idea as to how to get them to come back okay um you're dealing with someone who's really very much um they're, they're very loyal to you, okay? You're kind of like the apple of their eyes. And I feel like with this, this full card, this is like puppy love, okay? And not in a foolish way because animals, you know, they're very good at sensing good and bad people. So this is not blind faith. This is not somebody who is like naive about your intention. I feel like they know exactly what you're doing and they're going back into it because they want to communicate too. So... I see both people being very stubborn, just incredibly stubborn. Um, and what I'm sensing is um, they're aware of your antics. You guys are pretty transparent. They're aware of what you're doing and um, they're not calling you out on it because I feel like they, they, they miss the communication. They, they don't want that distance. They want to bridge that gap and they do want to communicate with you and come in and see what you have to say, okay? So I feel like there's a situation here where you feel like you have a brilliant idea as to how to get them talking again, but they already see through it. They, they see through the facade. They, they're able to sniff it out and they're still coming back. So I feel like somebody is coming back under the guise of helping somebody else with something but it's not really you know it's just conversation starter okay so what i feel here is somebody sees your game somebody knows exactly what you're trying to do and uh they're pretending like you know on the surface they're falling for it but they're not really falling for it they're aware of what you're doing and likewise you somebody else could be doing this to you and you are totally aware of their intentions and you're coming back in because you are anxious to have this communication okay so i feel like it, the energy is really good especially in the first six cards um just a little bit of a segue i feel like for those of you who are, have been thinking about leaving your work environment your current work environment we have many reasons to leave okay um, if you feel like a lot of your uh, friends and your co-workers or friends that have been co-workers are leaving, are retiring, are going off to, you know, look at greener pastures or thinking about, you know, moving location and things like that, um, there's like, you know, some, some big friendships that will be severed in the work environment because somebody's leaving. Um, they're leaving not because the i do see a little bit just a little bit of toxicity in the work environment and it's the structure i feel like something is very inefficient it's not done well um and so i feel like they're leaving because of that but also because they're they're scanning the horizon for greener pastures so i do feel some people are going to be leaving 
And then I feel like because you're still around, you're going to be handsomely rewarded for your loyalty to that work environment. Okay, that can go both ways. If you have been feeling underappreciated and you feel like you want to stay in this work environment, I feel that you're going to, going to be handsomely rewarded. New positions opening up, or even like they're going to keep you in mind for the next round of promotion. Okay, and then on the flip side, if you feel like this work environment has been a little bit draining or a little bit toxic, you might be thinking about leaving, and you might have signed on like some type of a.、Um, I feel like some of you might have found a new job, and you're thinking about leaving. So you might have, you know, talked to your supervisor, and then your supervisor might have、uh, escalated up the chain of command, and they want to keep you, and so they might be giving you some type of like、um, some type of a bonus, some type of a promotion, some type of an incentive, in order to keep you here. Keep in mind, money isn't everything. Okay. And sometimes we forget that. I just feel like you made up your mind to leave for a reason. You had very, very good reasons, and I do sense for many of you it's a toxic work environment, or it's a work environment where you felt. I I almost feel like a sense of ethics, like it, it's a breach of ethics. It's not a a good environment to be in, and so no matter how much they give you, you really want to think about it, mull it over. So we have here the judgment and this three of pentacles, which is escalation in your financial situation. Page of pentacles, job offer coming into the picture, and、um, I, I like this card because it just screams out exactly what it means. Okay, you know how elephants they make that really loud honking noise with their trunk, I guess. And so this is sort of like something that is very loud, very flamboyant, very noticeable, and it's meant to lure you back in. And so you might have, you know, your own sense of loyalty. You guys are also extremely loyal, and you might be wanting to run back in, but you have to really understand why you decided to leave it in the first place. So even if they're offering you all this incentive, you know, like financial incentive to stay in new positions, the work situation is going to be the same. It's the same environment. Do you still want to stay in it? Or do you see yourself moving on to something where, or a situation where people are a lot more cooperative, where、uh, you're building something of greater value? Okay, so you've got some major choices here as well as it relates to your financial life. So I mentioned it's going to be a love reading, and then you know all these things spill out. So、um, it's important to spend this month, November, to mull these decisions over. I don't suggest you. You might be pressed for time. I do see a, a situation where there's like patience, but there's also fast-moving energy, and communication coming in as well. So I feel like you might have to, you might have a, a very narrow window of time to make a decision, to、um, submit that you know resignation letter, or even telling the new organization. When you want to start, so I I do see here a situation where it's time sensitive. It's very delicate, and so if you're being offered like a, an incentive to stay in a situation, you might want to really think about whether or not it is in your best interest. Whether or not it, you're still growing, you're still growing to the best of your capabilities and to the best of your full potential in the current existing relationship, or、uh, I'm sorry, relationship or even work situation, before you decide to stay in it, okay? Because I do see there are better things on the horizon for you, okay? So having said that, let me talk about the latter part of this month. First of all, we have here the King of Pentacles. This is your energy. And this is、um, a card about you know somebody who's very regal. Okay, they have a full head of like it, it's a it's a crown, and there's this pentacles in the third eye chakra. You know, overlaying the third eye. So you have a tremendous sense about how to make money, seeing value in things, seeing a person for who they are, seeing a situation for exactly what it is. Not mincing words, being very direct and clear with your communication, and you kind of like have really, really keen insights into situations and people. 
but I feel like in the past there was a situation here where you were um, not using your capabilities or not using your powers okay and we have here the page of pentacles so this is an escalation right like um, we're starting with the page and now we're turning into the king okay for some of you I feel like there was a situation where you had something in your life and you didn't see the full value of it and um, I feel like this might have been a, um, a love interest, a relationship partner, a, um, a significant other, somebody that you, you cared about. And I feel like you, you didn't understand, you know, we, we don't really understand things. We don't really know how much something means to us until we lose it, right? So I feel like in the past you might have been a little bit reckless with this um, relationship with this person. So the, the elephant is like rolling the pentacles in, on his trunk, right? It's, uh, it's very tender, but it's also a very delicate situation. It's a sand dollar. Sand dollars are very fragile and they can fall and crack, okay? And so I feel like there was a situation here where it wasn't handled with with great care it wasn't handled with respect it wasn't handled with delicacy it was very fragile and I, I i feel like it was mishandled and i feel like this is your energy taurus and i'm sensing now you're starting to see the value in it you're starting to see the value of this person you're starting to understand what went wrong you're starting to put this person first and you're starting to wear it on your head where it's protected you're starting to understand this person too so i feel like there was a situation where somebody might have you know outright told you you're not spending enough time with me you're not treasuring me you're not um appreciating me you're not making the time for me you're you're um you're not valuing this relationship and then I feel like they might have exited the picture and now in the presence in the aftermath you're starting to grow and mature from this situation and you realize everything that they mean to you and so for some of you you're in this state where you have you know baited and and hooked and, and try to fetch the other person to come back and you've successfully gotten the other person to come back and the situation between the two of you is very delicate temperance pouring the two cups you know um, pouring water from one cup to the other and not letting a drip you know fall out this is a, a very delicate balance act and with this butterfly butterfly is very fickle and so when the strong gust of wind comes, it, it, it gets spooked and then it'll fly to the, the next flower. So I feel like you're dealing with a situation where balance and uh, fragility and just um, things are, are greatly resting on the balance, okay? The equal give and take, the, the reciprocity, not taking the other situation or the other person for granted not allowing them to I, I don't want to say it's about control i don't feel like it's about control here i feel like it's treating a situation with delicacy treating a person with the kitty gloves treating a, a relationship with like um with care okay and this is great because i i feel like things have to be fixed things have to be worked at and I greatly feel that you came to this realization, the light bulb moment, illumination, okay, judgment card. It's a giant light bulb. And so a switch has turned on in your mind and you've, you're coming up with great ideas as to how to make this work. You're also coming to the realization because of the absence, because of the yearning, because you're also dealing with someone that you felt like, you know, they had options. They flit around, they have um, multiple people that they, they could be with, 
and you're realizing how important they are to you. And so you're putting them first, okay? They're over your third eye. They're, they're being put like in a place of importance on your head rather than just, you know, uh, balancing delicately on the trunk where they can fall and slip and crack, okay? So I feel like there's definitely a maturation process where you're starting to understand how much something or somebody means to you and you're putting in great care, great sensitivity in order to preserve it, to keep it intact. But not it's not about control, okay? You, you've already let go of that past control issues. It's not about wanting to control the situation. It's more just treating it with, with the care and the tenderness that it deserves. So that's great, Taurus. The last card that I'm seeing here is I feel like even if you were to bait and hook and get this person to come back into the picture, the root of the problems has not been addressed, okay? So there was a uh, an argument here. A lot of the times, you know, when you have a history with somebody, um, there are petty arguments, right, that, that flare up every now and then. With every couple, with every uh, group of people, there's always like little petty things that come up. But there's always like an, one underlying issue. And I feel like across the board with all relationships, it's all about people um, and their grievances over, I did this much work and the other person is not reciprocating. It's always about reciprocation. You know, um, so I, I feel like the root of the problem has not been addressed even though there's communication between you and the other person because you figured out how to get them to come back or you know they figured out how to get you to buy into you know the the, the communication but i feel like the the root of the problems have still not been addressed okay the blade is covered up so true communication uh, needs to be had in uh, order to uncover things. If there's a problem, we need to understand the problem in order for us to fix it. If we're too proud, if we're too, um, um, you know, mired in the fact that we're right and they're wrong, it's never going to get to the root of the problems. And you guys are never going to see eye to eye perfectly with the other person because I feel like they are as stubborn as you are. You're never going to see eye to eye. But I feel like that doesn't mean you let the, the problems kind of um, fester. Okay, so I, I definitely feel like even though there's communication and you might be back in the honeymoon stage with this person, there's still going to be that flare up. Five of Wands, okay? Conflict inner conflict not knowing what to do one person might feel very very attacked one person might feel like the other person is attacking their ideas attacking their plans one person might have like you know grandiose plans and you're poking you're, you're seeing all the plot holes in their plans and you're like asking them questions and then they feel like they're they're being attacked so i feel like there is a situation here where there's a lot more love and support and tenderness that needs to come into the picture in order to smooth things out between you and another person. So the way in which we communicate, the tone that we use, you guys are very even tempered. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot for a Taurus person to get pissed off and to get angry and to scream and yell. You guys don't get to that point ever. I, I, I feel like it takes a lot, but once you do, it is kind of like that, that cry or that uh, honking from the elephant it's very loud and it's very distinct and it can be very scary for the partner and so i feel that things don't have to you know get to that point maybe we can preface you know before we start a, a conversation preface it saying hey i hear what i'm what you're saying but here's my question rather than just you know shooting them like, well, there's something wrong with that, there's something wrong with this, there's something wrong with what you're saying. Um, preface it with, I hear what you're saying, but I have a few questions for you about what you're saying, so that the other person doesn't feel attacked. And you know, 
this is not all your fault, Taurus, and, and by no means, you know, it, it takes two to tangle, right? So the energy is also interchangeable. It could be from the other person's perspective where they identify so strongly with their ideas that whenever you ask them questions about that, their ideas, they, they feel like it's a personal attack on them. And so, you know, it could be just their their hang-ups, their issues that they have to cope with and deal with and, and find healthy outlets for their own, you know, um, hang-ups. But I do sense there is... I, I do feel like it's a misunderstanding. It's also communication issues between you and the other person that can be easily fixed, okay? And um, I feel like it's it's left unaddressed for some time and it's created a rift between the two of you. One person tries to move on and the other person reels them back in. And then, you know, the, the, the makeup, the, the makeup stage and the honeymoon phase is, is here. And then before you know it, the same problem comes back. And so don't let things repeat. Don't let these cycles keep on, you know, going because it's the same issue coming back in, not seeing eye to eye. And I feel definitely you're making some changes. You're starting to see the value in, in the person and you're aiming to put them first. You're aiming to, to really, you know, show them how, how, how much they mean to you. You're making some changes. I do see some behavioral changes. But then I also see from their end where they also have to, to you know, put in the work, okay? Um, so I, I feel like a, a really strong um, reconciliatory energy where you are definitely trying to make things work with another person and they likewise are trying to make things work with you. You might have complained in the past that they're like a flitting butterfly. They're not loyal. They're not faithful. They're not, you know, truthful and all of that. And I feel like they're trying to make a change in their own life or in the way that they interact with you. So I definitely see here um, two people coming together. But I also feel like don't let this honeymoon stage um, be the reason why you don't address the important issues because they're going to, at the end of the month, they're going to come back in and you have to, you know, hash these things out, okay? So I will just leave it at that, okay, Taurus? I hope the reading finds you well. I hope it is helpful for you. And for those of you who are looking for a reader who are interested in a reading, I've included a link in the description box below for a um, psychic. She's based out of California. Her name is Bridget. And she um, is very good at her craft. If you're looking for guidance, if you're looking for information, if you're looking for spiritual, you know, information especially, uh, I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. Her information is in the description box below. And uh, I will leave it at that. I will see you guys in the month of December. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving for those who are celebrating. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care.